These are the elements of art, and we use them in almost everything we do in our projects in art class. The ones we're gonna focus on today will be color and line and shape. And these are the principles of art. We're going to focus on pattern and movement and variety today. First, let's start with your green paper. It needs to be vertical. And I've chosen a few different colors of green crayons. And using these green crayons, I'm just going to make lines all up and down the length of my green paper. This just gives your grass that you will be using to weave with a little more interest. You could also use markers or colored pencils for this part. You could even use watercolors if you have them and if you want to use them. Just don't paint the whole paper. Just make lines with your crayons. All right, so we have our grass drawn. And what we're going to be doing is using our two fingers to make a measurement for where we're going to cut our green paper to create grass. So I'm just using two fingers and then on the other side, making a mark with my pencil along the top of my paper, just like that. And then with your pencil, you could draw a straight line down, but stop before the bottom of your paper. Do that all the way across. Make sure you stop before the bottom of the paper. Try to make your lines fairly straight, but it's okay if they're not perfect. Try to stop right about in the same spot each time. When you're done with that, you're going to turn your paper so that you are going to cut from the, what was the top edge and you're going to cut along your lines and stop before you get to the end of your paper. And you're going to do that for all of those lines that you drew. All right, so we have all of our lines cut and it's still connected at the, this edge, but this edge is a little plain. So what we're going to do is make these look more like blades of grass. And if the blades of grass haven't been cut by a lawnmower, they have points. So I'm just using my scissors to cut points on the ends of each of the blades of grass. All right, we've got our grass done and it's time to start drawing our snakes for our grass. So I've got my paper in landscape mode and I am ready to start. So I'm, I've got room for about four snakes on my paper and I'm just starting here with a very simple snake shape. So I started with the head and then I'm making a gentle waving body. And if you want to, you can do some research on different types of snakes and what they look like because they're not all the same. And when it comes time to adding patterns and designs to your snake, you can either create your own designs or you can use real snakes as inspiration. It is completely up to you. And now I'm just beginning to add some details. So I'm gonna start with the snake tongues. If you want to have the snake's tongues peeking out 
or sticking out, you can do that. You don't have to. I am because it adds more interest. And I did a couple of different types of tongues there. And then I'm going to just add simple eyes. They're gonna look a little bit cartoony here. You can make yours realistic. Little nostrils. And do that for each one of your snakes. Mine are all going to be unique, so they're gonna be looking in different directions. And like I said, you're going to start decorating or adding designs to your snakes. And you can either use snake patterns that you've researched or you can create your own. I just created my own. Kept it pretty simple here. Remember, you're going to have to color these. So the more intricate your designs are, the more intricate your coloring will be. So once you're done drawing in pencil, you can begin to trace your pencil lines either with a Sharpie or a regular marker. I happen to have a Sharpie and I'm just going to very simply trace all of my pencil lines. Now, just a reminder that if you don't have a Sharpie and you're going to trace with a regular marker, uh, do that last after you color if you're going to use markers to color with. If you're going to use crayons to color with, then you can go ahead and trace your pencil lines now. All right, I have finished and I'm ready to begin coloring. I've got my crayons and my markers. I'm actually going to use both to color with today. You can use realistic colors from snakes that you've researched or you can use your own colors. They can be totally fantastic and unrealistic if that is what you choose. I'm gonna use um, pretty fantastic colors here. I wanted to show you here how you can use a combination of markers and crayons. And I just made the pink spots with markers and I'm using a purple crayon to color uh, the rest of the snake. And I am just going to color right on top of those pink spots because they're not gonna cover over it entirely. This makes coloring so much faster. So if you wanna try this technique out, you can. All 
All right, I have finished coloring all of my snakes and we're gonna cut them apart here in just a second. But first I wanted to talk about the colors and how I use them. So for this one I used markers only and this one is crayons and markers. This one's just markers and that one's just crayons. So to cut out your snakes, just roughly cut them apart like this. And here are my snakes all carefully cut out. Now you remember that grass we made earlier? All right, put that in front of you. And notice that the uncut side is on the bottom. Choose your first snake. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be going over the first strip, under the second strip with our snake, over the third, under the fourth, over the fifth, under the sixth, and over the seventh, and just sort of pull it through and make sure it's in a spot you like. And then you can choose your second snake. Now this time, instead of doing the same pattern, we're gonna do the opposite. So we went over the first strip, but this time we're going to go under the first strip. So under the first, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, over the sixth, and under the seventh. There, you can see how the pattern is different. And next, we're going to do the first row. I wanted to show you what happens when you do the same pattern as the row you just did. So I'm repeating that same pattern, but look, the snakes kind of overlap and you don't want that. You want them to stay separate. So make sure that you change your pattern in every other row. So we're gonna do it just like the first row. So we'll go over the first, under the second, over the third, under the fourth, over the fifth, under the sixth, over the seventh, just like the first one. So the next one will be like the second snake that we did. So we will go underneath under the first, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, over the sixth, under the seventh. And now our snakes are going through the grass and I'm just sort of arranging them so that they are separated a little bit. Now you wanna to try to hold them in place so they don't fall out. Now, if you want to be able to move your snakes around, you can, but if you wanna hold them in place, you're going to use a glue stick on each end. So I'm just lifting the tail, putting a little glue under, lifting the head, put a little glue under. I'm gonna stick, skip the second snake and do the third snake like that. And that, stick that right down. Now I'm gonna flip it over. So carefully flip it over. Oops, one of my snakes fell out. So I'm gonna to have to reweave it. So I have to remember what the pattern was that I did with that one. And redo it. And then for the back um, in the top snake and the second snake, you just lift the head and stick it down from the back. There you go. And there you are. You are finished with your very own snakes in the grass weaving. Good job.